Hey everybody, before we get started on the Well Read Podcast, please remember to pre-order Round Here and Over Yonder, Corey and Trey's new book. It's a travel guide, a front porch travel guide, that is, by two progressive hillbillies. Yes, that's a thing. It's a wonderful book. It is super hilarious. You can pick it up by going to TreyCrowder.com or CoreyRyanForrester.com or the link in the description. Either way, we don't care as long as you get it and as long as you love us for writing it. It's good. I promise you it's good. Anyways, enjoy the podcast and order the book. That would really hit for us. Thank you, Corey. I needed that. Rolling. Rolling. Thank you. What's up, everybody? What about how you guys doing? Good, man. How are you? Survived the hurricane. You did. I we got all, yeah. We all made it in. Yeah, you. Uh, your flight didn't. Get, I didn't hear from you, so I didn't think. No. I, yeah, I was. Uh, you were just talking before we started about how you're always right about things that are terrible. I was so utterly convinced uh, that I was going to not make it home because of the hurricane. Yeah, I, I changed like, my flight for the same like first reason. first West Coast hurricane in seventy years or whatever, and it's going to get cause me to get stuck in Burlington, Vermont, which I love Burlington, but still. I need to get home. Katie was leaving, all this stuff. So, like, I just knew it was going to screw me, but it didn't. I made it in. It was raining pretty bad, but it hadn't really even started yet. But, I mean, did it ever? It never really did. I don't think it flooded, which is what I was worried about. I think by the time I was looking at changing my flight, I was not worried about the wind. You know, I wasn't worried about, like, a hurricane landing near the airport. But I was like... You know how Atlanta can't handle snow, or they couldn't like yeah, 10 right. years ago because they're like, just not LA's used to like it? like that with rain. So I was afraid, like, oh, there's going to be flooding that's going to affect people getting to work. The airport's yeah. going to slow way down for these reasons. Yes. Uh, and I was still worried about that even when I woke up that morning because that can happen in a flash with those hurricanes. You can just get four inches in a second. Hey, that's my sex life, four inches, one second. And, Boom. um you know, it can really mess up the situation. So I got up at the ass crack of dawn after drinking till the end of the night yeah that hits uh i mean it don't it doesn't it don't what do you, uh what happened about how uh, i said i was in burlington we've been to burlington together before burlington's uh be lovely beautiful they mm-hmm. don't talk like this here i don't know why i did that it does sort of sound like burlington but they, anyway they kind of sound it is lovely they sound right canadian yeah that, a little. yeah that's I, I feel like the word the name burlington feel like i said i just want to go burlington i don't know why i was named after a guy like that yeah no doubt. for sure lord burling or burl and it, lord burl more lord burl God, that lord your burl. ancestor too <laughs> yeah right that's fucking crazy <laughs> great grandfather if i've ever uh, heard of one fucking lord burl over here yeah. uh yeah no it had to be just that's just how his wife addressed him lord burl yeah <laughs> uh anyway how big do y'all think, having been there before? Yeah. Like, how populous do you think Burlington is? I think it's like 265,000. Wow. That's very different. I, I was just... 25,000. Yeah, I, I know that's not right. I was just throwing something out there. Isn't there a school there? There's and, two. Okay, There's two we, we got to count there. those in my guess. My guess was when the kids are there. 260, I would have told you, I would have said by 125, 130, right? We're, while, if I didn't know the answer... 25 as a i would be like what that's crazy there's no is way that what it is? there's no way it's that low. it's 44 with it or is, without okay. the kids it is it is the least popular price is right i win i didn't go over that's true i'm so why it was that literally just random because twenty five thousand well, is like just, that's it, that's like fort oglethorpe or something it's like well, 25, it, it's just people. that i knew by the way that you framed it that it was going to be smaller than you'd think you yeah, know what i mean still, I, I just anyway it's the least populous most populous city in any of the 50 states so all the 50 states got the most populous city in that state you list them in order of size burlington is 50 out of 50 it's even smaller than like cheyenne or wherever the hell in alaska or montana or those places which i thought was wild so burlington is like super rural or vermont super rural all of, that's the biggest city and it's not very big it's super rural vermont but also super you know blue and queer uppity. and crunchy and stuff i don't, I don't think uppity that's like because like, it's like hippies. Connecticut's right? uppity. Yeah, but that's yeah, true. I, I just think that that's like that's that's wild. I that joked about wild. it on stage a little bit. I was like, "How the hell did y'all figure that out?" You know, I thought the Supreme Court ruled against that. Like, I think it's supposed to be <laughs> possible, <if I> can, <laughs> right? For like, usually the smaller a thing is, the more. I mean, it's definitely homogenized. Like, it's super white there. Okay, super you know, white, but, right, white and rural. Okay, 
Right. But not red ass as fuck. That's right. I just want to say odd. It doubles when the when the University of Vermont's in school. That's why it seems bigger than it is. Because I just looked. It says ten thousand kids enroll every year, which is forty thousand over four years. We're not even counting people who were there for seven. Which I've met them woodchucks. There's at least a few of them, and there's probably PhDs. So there's at least forty thousand more people there during the school year because they never count that. And I, and the only reason I'm bringing it up is. I think that's why it seems bigger. Like, college towns seem bigger than what you read about their population because it swells so much during the school year. Yeah, I mean, I feel I Yeah, think like Athens like, doesn't seem that big, but there's a shit ton of people there during that, yeah, period. Yeah, and I've only ever been there when they're out, when school's out, or there's only, only yeah. a few of them because it's about to end, and everyone's like, do not choose to move there until you go there during the school year. Yeah. You do not know anything yeah. about the city. Dude, that's so accurate, man, because I've been both. Like, when we were touring, they weren't in school, but most of the times when I went there, you know, it was during football games or whatever. And, like, bruh, I mean, it's like downtown Athens during college football is like being in Times Square. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. just fucking elbow to elbow. But when they're not in school, it's like, what a quaint little place to write a novel. Yeah, uh, yeah, Burlington sort of like, you know, it's a quaint place to write a novel. Is I it a college like. town? I know it's also the capital, or not the capital, the most populous city, but is it a college town? Would you? Def- I mean, I think if it's half the population, you got to say that, right? Yeah, I think so. Because I think like those are like, the, again, there's two colleges. I think it's Champlain College and then well, Univers- uh, yeah. University of Vermont. I didn't look that one up. But uh, when I was leaving Vermont, when I was leaving Burlington, um, I had to leave at 4.45 a.m. to get that early-ass flight to try to beat the hurricane back or whatever, and uh, I had to call a cab because I didn't trust Uber in a city that small at 4 four in the morning on a Sunday. So I called a cab. My cab driver was this grizzled old some bitch, just an old salt, even though we weren't, like, on the sea, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, they're on that lake there. But he was, like, uh, a big-time over-sharer. mm where y'all at on on those people? Uh, hey, uh, at four in the morning, yeah. fuck them. Yeah. Sometimes like, it's fun though. I have to be like, like drunk at a bar, because sometimes they they share like wild shit and it's entertaining. You know what I mean? Well, on that, I note, mean, there you go. It depends on the person. Like if the if if you happen to run across an oversharer who's insanely entertaining, that's the greatest thing in the world because it's like, hey, I didn't even have to download a podcast today. I got one in real life. But yeah. like. When it's a boring motherfucker just drawing yeah. on about their problems, no good. But also, at four in the morning, I don't give a damn how entertaining they are. Right. That don't hit. Well, y'all know I am, especially that early. I don't want I don't, to, I don't ever want to talk to anybody, really. Like, cause I, it's because I'm socially awkward. Like, they, you know, Uber's got that thing now where you could click, please don't talk to me hitting this thing i've ever done i love that so much <laughs> you, so uh, you click it hell yeah i click it <laughs> yeah. dude what y'all be talking to him? no, no I, I, get I mad when i, I haven't to ubered it. since that option was available okay I, and it's not it's a, and it's, it's not, not on a lift like, unless you get the top one and it's not a, like how d- you deign to speak to me you know what I mean? it's not like one of those it's just like oh god let's please not do this mm. like small talk it's just painful to me i just don't i just i'm just an have, introvert or whatever have you had them disregard it no, it's a relatively recent thing. I've taken a handful of them and I've clicked it, and they always are shut up the whole time, which hits. All right, two but you things. can't do that with this old fuck. With Lyft, you can <laughs> if you get the top one, then it's an option, but it's not otherwise, which I think it's funny. It's like, are you willing to pay five more dollars? Actually, so somebody you're will right. shut the fuck up, and that's funny. That and is then, true. Uh, yeah, and in Austin, the answer is yes for me. In Austin, <laughs> just a quick one. One of mine was deaf. Like when I got in, she just turned around. And had that hits too. And I literally said, <laughs> "Hell yeah, yeah, yeah exactly." And then I felt yeah. terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like, I, like Any, she probably read my bro, lips. I went, "Hell yeah." Anytime I see that the driver is deaf, I'm like, "Fuck <laughs> yeah, sorry." <laughs> well, she, 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 she went like that with a piece of paper, and I went, "Hell yeah," yeah. and then I felt yeah. bad. But same thing with me, <laughs> but with up. Chinese. Like if they can't speak the language, that's yeah. great too. But they probably they start try. talking to you, right? People often mistake you for uh, speaking the language. Specifically, the woman at your gas station who you probably yeah. grew up with and knows your parents. Some people think Corey's Asian sometimes. And if you, you know, yeah, look at his eyes. I, you know, like he's the big cheeks. He looks what we say, Korean. So we decide Korean. Uh, Korean. I think we if shouldn't. anything, yeah, 
That's probably true, though. Yeah. Well, Tushar said it, and their Indians are Asian, so he's allowed. Tushar is constantly doing things that are racist towards um, people other from the Orient, that's and then huge. being like, "I'm Asian." Well, that dude, that's like Asia's whole thing. They yeah. love that. They all do that. They stay doing that. I oh, just yeah. love how he's like, "No, no it's not me. offensive. I'm Asian." I mean, and he's doing know. a Japanese accent. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> okay, we're American, so can we do Mexicans accent? It's literally the same thing. It's not the same thing. North we're American. White. We're white. We're, he's Indian, and they're Asian. They're all people of color. Oh, okay, yeah. maybe. Tushar's fine. He is. I, he I can't feel say like the I N-word. should give a little context on what you just said about the gas station lady. For everybody that don't know, because I don't think we've talked about this on here. Oh, I thought we had. Um, my ga- what, what, Drew? I thought we had, so... Anyway, oh, well, in case you hadn't, for some reason, every time I go to the gas station, there's a specific lady that works there... And when I give her my candy bar or whatever uh, and pay her and I say, thank you, see you later, she always looks at me and goes, oh, thank you, ding, dong, ding. And I thought she just did it to everybody. And then I kept going back in and like just watching her with other people. And she never does it to anyone yeah. but me. Have a blessed day. Praise you all that like sweet old Southern lady <laughs> shit. And then you walk out and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it's so funny because yeah. she's racist and stupid. Yeah, right. They do go hand in hand. They but, do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, like, dude, <laughs> I, you know, y'all know, fucking, uh, the guy who owned the club that we both started at, Bobby Jewell, and oh. I'll say his name. I don't give a fuck. fuck Bo- Bobby Jewell. Fuck him. Like, uh, I, I, nobody's out. Like, he's not He's not in the game anymore. Matter of fact, I've been told that now the Side Splitters in Tampa is like a super hitting club that to, comics yeah. love, which I was like, well, goddamn. That's literally the only place I told my agent I would not go because of the owner, Bobby Jewell, who is not there anymore. So, but anyway, also the improv in Tampa hits for me. But Bobby drunken lunatic just like a art like a cliche of a sleazy club owner relic of the boom or whatever as you both know but he used to for a while i had shorter hair and a longer beard. i barely have a beard right now but i had not even that long of a beard but like a little bit of a beard and shorter hair and he used to call me muhammad and make terrorist (laughs) jokes about me like, I'd come in the room, and he'd be like, oh, la, 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 like, to do shit like that, you know? And I'd always just look at him in confusion. I would say, but Bobby, you know how I talk. You know who I, you know what I mean? Like, I'm white trash, I, you know, and but he would just be like, ah, fuck off, Muhammad, you do know, you, whatever, and then hit me with some more racist <laughs> against Middle Eastern people shit. <laughs> Corey, do you think that when Trey first started breaking on the internet and someone showed Bobby, he went, fucking called it. I fucking called. Yeah. I knew that piece of shit hated America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be funny if that's just what he meant the whole time. I hate America because he right. called me a commie to, queer. You need to tell your story because yes. we've teased it, and then Corey and I got you off track. My yeah. apologies. Uh, the the cab driver, right? Yeah. No oh, option. Yeah, no bad. option to tell him not to talk, right? So you get in, and he's like, <laughs> not one you could live with. And immediately he's like, uh, he's like, yep. Yeah. I've only been doing this partner 40 years. <laughs> Won't be long now, though. Right? Uh, <laughs> Did he die? I guess. I don't know. Or yeah. retired. It seemed like he was talking about retired. I don't know. But I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, yeah, it was a real bad alcoholic for the first 24. Which So means like he was an active driving. drunk while driving a cab <laughs> in yeah. Vermont for 24 years and just you know saying that so, so yeah. far I'm in yeah right I'm listen I'm not saying this don't hit it's just wild like, yeah so then he keeps going and of course to all this stuff I'm just like right yeah man wild you know were you hung over like a little bit yeah, yeah. and tired as fuck two yeah. hours of sleep yeah. whatever and uh, I'm not the most chipper person in the best of times in the best of days but especially in that scenario yeah i'm just back there like right on yeah and he's he keeps going he's like yep yeah, just just started talking to my brother again after 37 years his wife died last year got cancer brain cancer started <laughs> the brain started in her <laughs> breast they cut both of them off but it moved to her brain she's dead now <laughs> She was my ex. (laughs) (laughs) She was my ex. He goes, did you catch that part? (laughs) I said she was my ex. Yeah, I caught it like she caught cancer. He was like, we were together since sixth grade. My brother got her pregnant. 
I took the son of a bitch 36 years and her dying of cancer for him to apologize to me. But I guess oh we're God. all right now, right? Like, just I mean, <laughs> that's some wild ass family drama, dude. I just met this dude. It's four forty five in the morning. This is apropos of nothing. That, this and is like, a BoJack Horseman episode. I know. And then, and then it took a pretty, pretty hard turn, which also didn't not hit for me. He was like, he like says, I was like, yeah, but she's dead now. So what do you do? Right? <laughs> And I said, and you know, Corey, like he lies, which I respect. Uh, but I, you know, I just I can't. I'm, can't. I don't, don't want to get take a chance of getting caught in a lie, even though I don't hit for me to tell people I'm a comedian because oh, tell me a joke or whatever. Or this happens. He asked what I do. I said I'm a comedian, and he just starts telling me jokes, right? And they're all old man book jokes, right? So I'm so worried they're about to get you know real rough at a certain point. But worried they, or excited? He, well, you know, a little column A, a little column B, right? But like he, they were almost. <laughs> all about this town called Milton, Vermont, which is funny to me because it's like, does this dude not realize that he knows I'm from Tennessee, live in California, he knows all that, he knows I I just visit here. Does he not realize that most people don't know what Milton, Vermont is? But to be fair to him, I picked up on the context clues pretty easily because it started, I think the first one was he was like, how do you compliment a woman from Milton, Vermont? Nice tooth. (laughs) <laughs> right, <laughs> and then he's like, uh, "What do you call thirty-two w- Milton women in a row? A full set of teeth, right?" And then there was a, mm, "How do you circumcise a little boy in Milton?" And I knew, Ooh, hold on, let me I guess, let me guess, one, let me guess. I knew this one. I'd heard this one before. How do you circumcise a little boy from Milton? You hit his uncle on the top of the head. He said, "I said." Kick his sister in the chin. That's what I thought right? it was. That's that's the version I always heard. Kick his sister in the chin. It's usually Alabama if you're from the South. That's how you circumcise an Alabama man. You know, whatever. Kick his sister in the chin. So I say kick his sister in the chin, and he goes, he goes, his mother. Kick his mother in the chin. It's funnier if you say mother. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah. sorry. And, he, uh, don't want, he don't want to hear about anyone fucking each other's siblings. That's hard for him. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. I didn't think about that, but that's funny. But he... Uh, and then he he did some more, which I can't remember too early in the morning. But he did a bunch of them, right? This is a like a twelve minute trip, by the yeah. way, and all this is packed into it. We're getting close now, and he's like, "Yeah, I do a little stand up myself, you know, back there at the <laughs> club." He's like, first time in there, they threw me out." I guess they didn't like the racist jokes I was doing. (laughs) There we go. He said, said, they weren't funny. I said, they are funny. You don't know what's funny, you know, or whatever. Then we get there, and I'm so worried this whole time because I almost never have cash, right? As soon as I see this dude, I'm like, a card is going to be a fucking problem. Because you're not using Uber. You're using, like, small small city cab services. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. They they don't want to take a card. You can make them usually. But we get there, and I'm like, so what do you call a credit card in Milton, Vermont? <laughs> a pill chopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he probably loved that. That fit right in. But it was like a... Stolen. We, we get there, and I'm like, do, do you take a card? And he was like, sure, sure, I could take a card. And I was like, okay, great. And he like opens up the console and pulls out the machine and starts like yeah. tapping on it. It's doing nothing, <laughs> like nothing at all. And he's like, "Well, what's wrong with it?" You know. And then he like finds the cord, plugs it in. And he's like, "This thing ain't doing a day. I don't know what to do about it. I, don't know. I feel like an asshole." You know, whatever. And I had one hundred dollar bill, right? No. And I was like, "Do you have cash?" He's like, "Well, sure, I got cash. I got plenty of cash." And I was like, "The trip was thirty dollars." I held up the $100 bill. I said, can you just give me $60 and we're good? You know, so I'm giving him, I'm tipping him $10, giving him $40. And he was like, well, I don't have that much. Who has that much? You know? <laughs> and I was like, well, how much do you And he sits there and counts it out. Most of it's in ones and fives. And he's like, five, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And I'm sitting at the airport dying to get out. Yeah. And he get, he's like, I think I've got $40. And he gets to, he's like, 41 Wait, I thought it was forty. Then he flips it over and starts counting through it all again. Just to he hustled you, you know? and uh, now he had forty dollars. Like there wasn't anything left in his, his pocket or whatever. He was. He told me he was like, "You, you, do you come back here often?" I said, "You know, every couple of years or so." And he's like, "Well, next time you get a free cab ride on me." And I was like, "You already told me you're going to be dead in six months." Or <laughs> like that's what, that's what you opened with. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway. He got in jail for murdering off his you. brother. Yeah, it's just wild, dude. Like I, people, I, like, and I know old people 
like you know they can be r real chatty and shit you know mm -hmm. what i mean and mm -hmm. and a lot of and, them get into that profession because they like that right yeah but it's just so wild to me i i used to, what's even worse than that i used to work with a server at o'charlie's when i was in college and she did that she was this you know white tr sweetheart but you know white trash uh, bigger girl and she just like straight from the trailer and she'd just be like you know you want super salad with that you know my boyfriend's probably going to jail again for pills but we're doing okay you know shit like that like literally no context just out of nowhere and people these like churchy ass people in cookville tennessee were it super did not hit for them and she did not pick up on it at all mm -hmm. uh, not even a little bit ended up getting fired if memory serves and couldn't understand why a lot of those people too they um amongst their talk they like for some reason they think that everybody wants to hear about their bowels i've noticed um mm -hmm. like uh, another gas station thing there's this girl that works at the gas station and she too bigger gal she's super sweet um i went in there one on. night I, I remember i remember i went in there one night and i got uh like i was drunk and i got like some cheeto mac and cheese I put it up there, and she was like, "Ooh, oh, man, you had this? I was like, yeah. She goes, oh, man, I love this. Me and my roommate split it for dinner the other night, and now I'm feeling bad. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? And she goes, but i tell you what, it tore me up. And now I'm sitting here picturing her taking shit, you know. <laughs> then I come back in there. <laughs> then I come back in there a couple of days later, and nobody's in there, right? And so I get up, get up to the front, and, like, I just wanted a Gatorade, and I'm about to just, like, literally leave a note like hey Corey was here he got a gatorade i'll get you back later then she comes out of the bathroom yeah. and she's just like patting her belly yeah, and she goes wait yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> and i was like i was like hey and she goes i don't know what it was but something tore my ass up it spanked too yeah. <laughs> and like i don't really know her except for getting fig newtons at two in the morning yeah. and i i just have to expect that she just tells everybody about her bowel movements i don't know there again it's kind of like could the other thing. thing could be you like right yeah, he looks like that to me he looks like the kind of guy and it's like this guy knows about shitting hard and stinking and stuff like that. <laughs> he's also got he comes in here he eats trash at 3 a.m every goddamn day like this dude knows what it is to blow a turlet up also look at his face <laughs> like, well he has such an know. inviting energy which we've talked about this before in terms of like what you do on stage you are aware that people feel you know generally comfortable around the roundness i, yeah. I i'm the, it's like the opposite for me and sometimes i feel bad about like that people like look at me and they're like nope oh, that's a cop face and i don't like it and then i hear stories like this and i'm like nah it's worth it i'm glad dude no one you're so right that there is something about me that like I, if if i had wanted to i probably would have made a really good therapist because people do feel comfortable opening up to me i look like a person that do they oh, open up or just like, share shit like that because i feel like you know, for me dark shit people will throw them. i get trauma dumped a lot but i don't ever get like let me tell you about my shits and i thought you were chinese so i'm just gonna make an accent towards you <laughs> yeah i get i get like there's darkness in your eyes well all right here we go I feel like yeah. I don't often get either, but obviously I just got a whole bunch of that from that old fella. But he definitely was the type. Like he, it's wild that he's like saying that, presumably multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, you know, at least pretty frequently. He's telling it was that story polished. over and over to strangers. I mean, you know, that away on you. Your, Dude, you know your brother never fucks your old lady that. and ruins your family, and then you know she dies of cancer forty years later. Was her death fresh? He maybe said he's, last year. So he's processing maybe that, and that's why because like. I, I think that people do that like there's a time period where they well dude i definitely accidentally found myself telling people about my brother comics not like strangers but just like me sitting around in a green room and i'd be like halfway through the story and realize dude, this is horrific nobody wants to hear this what am i doing well you know what i do do because you've seen it a lot and this is worse than that i think and it's talking about two other comics specifically is i'll get in a mode where i'm trying or other like writers it happens with writers a lot i'll be like trying to like commiserate with them so i start bitching about like how awesome your the, life is the industry and stuff <laughs> yeah. about things not working or whatever but usually it's two people that like you know do not get hit. hit as hard <laughs> as me or whatever and it's a really weird and not cool thing to do and i'm totally oblivious to yeah. it the whole time you know what offends me i did me? that this weekend in yeah. burlington i was doing that. <laughs> to the feature yeah you know what offends Who me I know. is that you couldn't decide if 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 i was a comic or writer during that story you just told man that's what upset me what do you mean the joke was that you do that to me I, oh you, you yeah, don't yeah, yeah. but that was the bit yeah i just well i was gonna say that's why like our friendship has grown even stronger over the past seven years because we're the only ones in each 
each other's lives that knows exactly how it all like we can share our bullshit because i'm i'm with you like if i ever you know some of my comic friends from chattanooga like they're still my comic friends but i find myself bitching about something and i'm like oh you would love to have this issue dude i just realized i did that all weekend in austin you we do and you don't even realize right, it I, yeah. I, I and what's funny is my takeaway i realized i was doing it i shouldn't say i just realized i did that i realized i was doing it but my takeaway was because what I was talking about was like, look, you know, Well Read was awesome. Uh, we sold a TV show. I went on the road by myself. I made some money. I don't know if it's enough. I'm giving L.A. a shot. And then I'm going to be honest with you, fellas. I might back out of trying. Like, I'll never quit stand-up, but I, I think I might move back home and, and stop, like, trying to get the industry to give a fuck about me and just do stand-up, you mm-hmm. know? And Heard that. my takeaway at the end of the weekend when I realized I'd been doing that was, did you guys stop telling these kids on the come up that you're going to quit? Like you, you yeah, they, right. they might they look up to you. They might like bring you in on one of their projects, but they're going to write you off. And my takeaway should have been, hey, dude, stop complaining to people who are hungry for like everything you've exactly. got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, dude. That was actually that was actually like a thing. Like in therapy, one of my exercises that I worked on, which was like, anytime you want to bitch about a problem imagine yourself as 18 to 24 year old Corey, what he would think and usually the answer was he'd be so stoked to have this problem right you know what i mean sure. and I, then i would yeah. go okay i do does that. that help that much no though? no not for me so. that's what i was gonna say because i for five I, minutes i didn't need a therapist to tell i i do that to myself i always i say that to myself and then i'm like yeah it would hit for younger me younger me don't know shit fuck him <laughs> well listen <laughs> not to be not to be eat pray lovey i do think like quote unquote practice and gratitude like if you'll say out loud or just in your brain this is the things that these are the things i'm truly grateful for absolutely helps your life it helps mine it when does. i do that it makes me feel way better but it doesn't make me feel any differently about right. the problems that i have it makes me feel better about my life but the problem still exists and it's still annoying and i still want to commiserate and i was trying to commiserate the, the mistake i was making was commiserating with young comics who in retrospect some of them there in austin are are like getting success they don't realize that i'm part of the reason i'm telling them is that i'm jealous of them Uh like one of them was kc she writes for snl you know it's like uh, oh you don't even process that part of the reason i'm doing this is i'm jealous of your life because it's all ahead of you right now you know what i'm saying and then yeah i had to go to my hotel alone and think about that but yeah. yeah but dude it's so it's so ahead for us too like you know like i'm fucking i'll be 36 in a couple months but like i feel like i've always felt like 43 44 is when my career's really gonna fucking take off like we're white men in comedy imagine 100 agree with how that. sad we're all gonna be when it don't work when that don't happen but, but i also you know what I mean? and now we're 44 <laughs> but that's for future but us yeah that's i know, for I know. Future I know. Us. okay I'm but can saying. i just say something too you're already a headliner so like while there's many other dreams you want to accomplish the fact that you're moving to it's the way you are and Corey I think you probably could be at this point with the followers you have or close to it like like that's you're always going to have that to fu- like even yeah. if you're like in 40 and you're like fuck I still don't have a TV show but you're going to own a house yeah like oh, I'm dude, gonna, I know. I'm going to be renting a garage if I don't sure, do something sure. new yeah yeah I'm, well dude all of it sign up for gravybabypatreon.com like, yeah <laughs> I, I'm I'm genuinely fucking so excited about where my career is at. Like, I, I feel great about it. But, hey, speaking of b- being young, I did want to talk about one thing today that's going to probably make you feel super old, or at least it did me. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, so did y'all know that this coming Super Bowl will be the 20-year anniversary of of when Janet Jackson got her titty pulled out by Justin Timberlake. I didn't know that, but as soon as you said, "Did you know Super Bowl?" I knew what you were gonna say. Really? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, but I'm not that shocked. Does that make sense? I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not that shocked. I thought it might be uh, like Brady's first one or something. You know, like when he started the sentence. I'm saying, which was around that. That was like two or three yeah. years before that. that oh, was, and I knew it was gonna be about further, titties, baby. But, High five. Yeah. What's up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Drew's just because I remember that was a flashbulb moment for me. I remember where I was. Me too. I was in Corey Barlow's dad's trailer, right? And so I was like, uh, that means I was like late teens for sure, which mm-hmm. was, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. Yeah. Uh, people, I, I guess like uh, Timberlake, I don't remember. I wasn't real plugged in at the time. I was like, oh shit, Teddy came out, whatever. 
But like, didn't did he sort of like just throw her under the bus or whatever? Yes, he did. At he, the time, he, he didn't like, like say, "Oh my God, why'd she do that?" He just pretended like he didn't know it was going to happen. Like he had no part. And it, it was so obvious that they planned it, and he got away with it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think right. here's what the thing is: is that. He didn't, like, say anything, like, blaming her, but he also didn't come to her defense or anything. Like, he just sort of let her take all of that and never once was like, hey, why isn't anybody saying anything about me? You know what I mean? He didn't drag her out from in front of the bus when he had a solid minute and a half to do so. Right, He's just sitting like, oh, no, the bus is going to hit her. Yeah. Oh, man, look at this bus slowly coming towards her. Uh, Here comes the bus. Yeah, and he definitely had the power especially even in later years he definitely had the power to make a statement and be like hey it's kind of fucked up that when everybody talks about that they only talk about janet and not me the one who fucking did it i like justin timberlake and i don't think he's a horrible person but i think anyone who's seen him like in interviews or on punked when they stole his dogs knows that he's a fucking pussy I mean, that's, <laughs> that's probably why he's saying so good. <laughs> well, yeah, he was an insane. Yeah, you know, he's like a musical theater guy, or right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's a Nickelodeon yeah. kid. Yeah, right. Like the toughest one is Ryan Gosling. Yeah, that's so funny. And he's a doll. He was sweet. Yeah, yeah, he was sweet to my mom once at a store. So naturally, I like him. I know I like him too. But I think he's but a I'm with sweetheart. You. But I'm with you. He's a pussy. It was. Dude. It got scary. If everyone would have loved it. He would have absolutely been like, yeah, man, when we planned that, you know, I knew it was going to hit. Dude, He's just a pussy. No, and also, like, there's a lot of stuff with the Britney shit, you know what I mean? Like, him him sort of, like, during the, him and Britney's whole breakup, and then in, like, 2007, Britney had a... Which, if, if what happened to Britney in 2007 happened to her today, I would like to think that as a culture we would react to it different because we treat mental health a little bit differently. But, like, when Britney was clearly having a crisis of health... Like he sort of used as it used it as an opportunity to be like, see, I was the right one in the relationship, and he puts out all these songs about him and shit, and like, yeah, he like great entertainer. I maintain that like speaking of Disney kids, Gosling and Timberlake are two dudes who, if they had decided to go into comedy, they probably would have made it there too. Like as comedic actors, they're super talented. But yeah, Timberlake's probably a little bitch. I I would argue Gosling sort of has. I mean, he's in a lot of funny yeah. stuff. But well, having seen Barbie yeah dude he's like he's like he's like one of the funniest actors there is including like straight up comedic actors like he's like he's that good Uh, that thing you're talking about is so true but i I also think that's just hollywood man like i'm not i'm in no way am i trying to let timberlake off the hook for doing that but that is quite literally how this machine works you know there's that famous dave dave chappelle story he'd said no to comedy central and he flew back to ohio and when he landed, there were three stories out about him being crazy. Like, that's right. just how the machine works. You know, his PR people, they might not even ran it by him. They probably did, though. Again, I'm not trying well, to let him off the hook. That's true. And also, to be fair, when Tim, when all this stuff was happening with Britney, social media wasn't really that big of a deal. So in order for someone to say something or make a statement, it literally had to be during like a fucking press conference or something. Mm-hmm. It's not like Timberlake could have sent yeah. a tweet. The other, the other, that, those people, they'd have their publicists like put out a statement. Right. So that person would call their contacts with people that work at these various outlets and shows and magazines and stuff and like release a statement is how they used to do it. Let's also go back to that time period and how not only did we not know how to deal with mental health like in terms of a famous person we didn't know how to deal with it in our day-to-day lives and you guys have seen Brittany on social media lately mm-hmm. she's clearly got, got something together, going buddy. on and it and it's clear that like some version of the industry her parents her handlers have done this to her mm-hmm. like she was a very sure. bright young lady and now like there's there's something there's a disconnect there right my point with all that is and again i'm not i'm really not trying to fucking defend justin timberlake i called him a pussy earlier but that might be a natural reaction to that before we all learned about mental health of like he might have actually genuinely been like see i've been trying to tell y'all there's something wrong with her right yeah and and honestly i i understand that reaction like going like listen i you know i told you she was fucking crazy like we all did that younger when we were younger like this bitch is fucking crazy it's just like yeah you know yeah but like now with the britney spears thing like sort of unfolding it's like okay by our definition of crazy yes she is mentally unwell but like it's not her fault and like it's deeper than that like i'm not again i don't i genuinely don't think justin timberlake is 
a, a horrible dude because i think if he was more stories would have come out about him but like you get what i'm saying dude if you just don't write no stories will come out about you yeah just that's don't true. write seems to be if you're that talented all you gotta that do is, is like, not write. seems to be the main or rule. say the n-word and some of them do can't handle even that. then can't handle that you yeah. know like, yeah they just, they just keep got it's, to write well it's kind of why they got there you know what i mean yeah. it's like it's almost like it was the driving force for years mm-hmm. uh I, I wanted to ask y'all so Katie left this morning, uh, not forever. That'd be Sorry, wild. Buddy. That'd be wild if that's how I told y'all that. <laughs> yeah, after, like, especially after on, that fucking on story po- on the podcast. Yeah, like that's well, absolutely. Like, you went into that y'all. character because you were uncomfortable yeah. sharing your feelings. Yeah, yeah. I told the whole story about that guy <laughs> forty minutes into a random episode. I'm like, so yeah, she left me this morning. It's over anyway. I don't know, <laughs> but no, she flew back to Tennessee, uh, and this is still very raving. Yeah, she might she, be leaving. She flew back to Tennessee to do finish the work on the house i grew up in Mm -hmm. while i stay here with the kids as is my place right so like i'm here yeah cooking cooking cooking, cleaning (laughs) while she's while she's like pulling out insulation and putting up drywall and shit like that right like because that's our that's how it works in our but also like dude she's a fucking white woman she loves that hgtv shit she's a fucking hog heaven dude she loves this shit i don't i hate it that's work. also you got shit to do that's true i know but so anyway and we scheduled this along in advance so during a break in my schedule so I could be. So she's gone for like 10 days. How do y'all operate in a similar scenario, just generally speaking? Now, I have kids. Y'all are, I y'all say, are I new to I think the kids that. changes everything. It's I think like it almost does. like there's almost no way to like commiserate with you because it's so different. I, so because I because every time. So like I know, and I, Chad Daniels had great bits about this dynamic. I've heard a lot of other people pointing out. But Katie is very much one of those people that's like. She just thinks I am just utterly incompetent yeah, yeah, in yeah. every yep. capacity, uh-huh. right? Like, and anytime, so anytime she leaves me with them, it's like she's texting me the whole time. It's like, and she might as well be texting me like, "Hey, you remembered that we have children, right?" You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they're <laughs> fucking eleven and ten years old. Like, I remember, I know, you know. She's like, "You remember what school is? You know how like kids go to school? Now they eat three you're, meals. You're gonna, yeah, right. They need three. Yeah, exactly. It's like, don't let the cat die. Make sure the kids are like that that type of shit. And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. So, what I do is. Like I, I'm so powered by spite and so many things. Like out of spite, I like go into overdrive and oh, like yeah. when yep. she comes home, everything will be like Spotless. in immaculate yes. condition. Like, yes, mu- like kids have new haircuts. Everything is great. Like much more than when she left yeah. it, right? And it's all just to like prove a point. But I realize it's also like, wow, I really showed her. I was you know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I was about to yes. ask you. Yeah. Do you think you're winning this? No, I know. I, I'm aware of it. I'm saying it's like she's got me yeah. manipulated or yeah. trained or whatever so well. <laughs> she that, goes like, and gets to do a clean bath. Yeah, exactly. Dude, at but you. I, yeah, exactly. Right. So exactly. Amber. Amber has gone back to work. You know, when we first had the kid, we, she was off for the summer and and I was, you know, off not doing anything. Well, now she's gone back to work. So, like, from until Amber gets home from her elementary school job at, like, four, it's just me and the kid. Which, by the way, I've fu hucking loved it. It's been awesome. Uh, she, you know, Amber leaves. She wakes me up at 730. I get him. We have our bottle. We take a nap. I take him in there. We do tummy time. Then, you know, we watch our... But, you know, we watch our stories. We do a little bit more tummy time. He eats. We play around. It's it's fucking great. But I, too, have been like, she thinks she thinks I ain't doing shit. She thinks that I'm not a man, you know. So, like, I've been doing the same thing where, like, I've also been cleaning the fucking house. I've been mopping and shit. I've been getting stuff done. To prove just your so manhood. when she gets home. Right. Do what? But it's also the element of, to like. Press it to prove your manhood. Right. And I totally <laughs> get that. But it's also the element to prove of, like, my to worth. Prove I feel like there's also an element of like, see, I'll show her it can be done. God damn it. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Like, for, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Like, and, I, and, and I do it. And it's funny because I felt the same way. Now, part of me is genuinely just like, hey, if you are going to be the one that's at home, this is you do need to take right. care of the home. Right. right? Well, like, that's what you need to do. Like, man or woman, this isn't. This isn't man or woman's work. This is person who's at the house the most work. Right. Now. When she gets home at four, I then go to work. Like I then start my work and do all my shit. And I work from like four to about eight thirty ish. And then I come home and relieve her, the kid, and and then we put him to bed or whatever. And then I usually go back to work. But like, yeah, there there is this part of me that's like, I'll show fucking her how much I can get done. And it's like, yeah, she comes home to this pristine house, candles smelling everywhere, it's mm-hmm. been mopped, and like and at no point is she thinking, 
boy, that I, motherfucker really, really showed, showed me. me. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're sitting over there like, yeah, you see, you see, you see that? And she's just like, yeah. this is great. You know, just it's. It's just so raven, man. This is a hell of a thing for me to say, but you guys fight a lot of ghosts. You like yes, yes, right. But also, hey, do you do you do the thing that I do? Where it's like, it's possible that you could clean the kitchen, like and you know, like really wipe it down. But maybe she wouldn't like notice somehow. So you have to leave like a rag or the cleaner sitting there (laughs) somewhere. That's a Jeff Foxworthy (laughs) joke. Oh, is it really? He's talking about how like. Uh, men have to take credit for every chore that they do. Yeah. And yeah. the act out is so funny. A woman can be out repaving the, the driveway. driveway. Yeah. Man, I walk out on the porch. Oh, hey, yeah. baby, don't worry about cleaning out that ashtray in the den. I done got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. So I think I'm going to take me a nap, that's, man. I'm pretty tired. So hey, you great. need to smooth that out right over there. You <laughs> yeah, missed I totally it. forgot about that, but that's exactly what I do. That's exactly uh, what I do. Like when I fucking I'm the same mop, way. The king. Like when I mop, what I'll do is I'll leave like so our mop is in this like uh it's in this like closet in the middle of our like hallway. So what I'll do is I won't put the mop back in the hallway closet. I'll just leave it right outside, like, oh, I forgot to damn, I forgot to put the mop back in. Clearly I mop, but I forgot to put the mop back in. My bad, baby. I'll get that right after your ass see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I say stuff. Like I, you know, I'll like I'll be like, um, hey, uh, I need a knife for this thing. Can you they're they're in the, the there's clean knives in the drain because I did the dishes, but if you could bring yeah. me a knife so I can cut this box open. Oh yeah, scissors, good idea. I didn't even think of using the scissors that were right there. My fault. Yeah, and I mean, but like I also, and then too, you're right, dude. We fight so many ghosts, but then like I also have to make it a point to be like, and you know what? After I did all that, my ass went to work. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it wasn't like this was my only thing. Mm. I then went to work, and I'm telling you, dude, and I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble for saying this. I am gonna get. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. If you're a single mom who has to work and also raise a baby, that is difficult. But if you are fucking blessed enough just to stay at home with a kid and that's all you got to do, I find that to hit real fucking (laughs) hard. I find that to be great. I know. I find you need to shut the fuck (laughs) up is what you need to do. (laughs) Yeah, you really went there in the end. I love it. Yeah, I mean, what's it? You know, I mean, Bill Burr's got that legendary bit about these like, these mothers are out here bending over at the waist, putting DVDs in the DVD players. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> now, I mean, now, yeah. now, 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 let me preface it by saying this. If you're a woman who lives in an archaic marriage where your husband is forcing you to do this, but you would like to do something else, that's bullshit. All I'm saying is if you chose to be a stay at home mom and you're afforded that luxury because your husband makes enough money, then like, oh, boo, they puked on you. Change your fucking shirt. You don't have to do anything else. <laughs> it's fucking fine. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I mean, yeah, you know, I spitting spitting fire there. Uh, oh, it's because it's know. like you, I just always used to feel like, well, especially when I had the day job working for the DOE, because I had my kids then too, and like I would, I'd come home from that, and that job super did not hit for me, you know, of course. But yeah. I'd like come home from that, and then do a bunch of that type shit. You know what I mean? Like I was never the t- I was never the type of man just come in and like you know immediately start on a six pack of beer. That was that was great, great. timing. Immediately start <laughs> on a six pack of beer and just you know kick my feet up on the couch and like you ain't got dinner yet, ready yet? Goddamn, you know what I mean? Like I I cook too. I know, me too. That's what I'm saying. I think it's like, um, where are these angels? But anyway, I know. Uh, but yeah, so I know exactly what you mean because I used to say it's like I'm doing a lot of the shit that you know goes on that bucket while also doing all this other shit too and then you know get uh emasculated for not wanting to you know uh fix a clogged toilet or whatever mm. when we rent the fucking house anyway sorry this is not <laughs> i did not want this to anyway i think it's also like a this time, is hilarious i think it's a time I didn't think period it would go this thing. way because me and katie are doing great for the record yeah. right now i'm really me you, and amber you, are doing great <laughs> yeah. you, me you and think, amber are doing great Corey's like bringing me take, taking me back down memory lane and shit right now <laughs> fucking to earlier in uh the goings with I, the kids and the marriage and stuff i do think it's a time period thing i think that like there was a time where keeping a house was a different job than it is now 
Mm-hmm. You know, you had sure. four kids. There was no restaurants around. The grocery store was miles away. You had to mill fucking flour to make the bread. If you didn't have it spotless, you'd get tuned up at <laughs> yeah. 5.30. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. That's right. Amber's not coming home and beating me. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. And that is pretty sweet of her because she could. She uh, fucking could. All right. Speaking of reverting then back to the past, uh, which is what we've been doing for yeah. a while here. It's, yeah. it's, what I, it's what I wanted to talk about this week. So I went to Austin this weekend, and I had a show. I was supposed to have two shows at Vulcan, and one of them got canceled. So I had a show at Vulcan, but I went there a few days early, and I just, like, booked a bunch of, like, random shows. And I know you haven't been, Corey. I don't think you've been to Austin maybe once since the pandemic ended, but probably just to do your show. Damn, I don't think I have been to Austin since I— Last time I went to Austin, we was doing mushrooms. I'm going to—I'll be at Vulcan September 15th and 16th, by the way. Go to trackrider.com. So it's coming up soon. I'm looking forward to it. So this weekend was the last weekend we could do anything, like, sort of safely and, like, not needed to be close to the midwife and all the stuff because of the baby, right? So it was going to be like a baby moon, but as Annie was like, I don't want to do anything. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Austin. I've been meaning to check it out. So I didn't have like time. To, I just I just booked the one thing. Like it wasn't a headlining spot, right? So I was like, all right, I want to check it out. I'm going to try to get a mothership show. Sam Talent, shout out, got me one on Sunday, but I didn't want to hang around for it. But um, I spent Wednesday through Friday just hanging out, seeing old friends, making new ones, going to the Creek in the Cave, which is there now instead of New York. Uh, going Is it the to, same people? Like, you go there and you know the people there? I know some of the owners and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, like, the bartenders didn't move. Yeah. Eh, some of them may have. Right. And it is so very just an imprint of Joe Rogan and yeah, Dave right. Chappelle. That's what I've heard. It, it is. It is the, the scene is, and not that there's not all, not that there's not great and smart comics, but the imprint of Joe Rogan, elk hunting, <clears throat> there's so many, there's great comics but there's so many bad comics who just like they're just doing a joke about their who they date and they just want to work the f slur in yeah it has nothing to do with anything they're just like they're just being edgy you right know, it's so edgy like, for edgy like sake. when we started, I always hated that shit mm-hmm. all the bill well, hicks we, lights that were out there it was of, bill hicks and louie when we started yeah yeah when we start i was about to say everyone when, was when, suicide like, when i when I started, it was when I started, it was Mitch Hedberg and Bill Hicks. Yeah, and then and then Lou. So like, yeah, and like, there's nothing more annoying than seeing whatever the new generation copying this part. But this one is like, goddamn! Like at least Bill Hicks and Mitch Hedberg were like original heady thoughts and shit. This yeah. is just like we're all supposed to just say a slur and we're all supposed to just what? What's the new thing? Well, they also all got podcasts and they are way more focused on that. That's all they talk. They don't talk about jokes. They talk about their podcasts or whatever. But I mean, listen, I don't want to make it like it was awful. It's not like everyone there was just fucking Joe Rogan or his worst guests. Like I made a joke about one guy in particular who I don't like. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to get any of that stuff. And the comics I was with, like, fucking loved it. They were like, yeah, we hate that fucking guy, too. So I, I'm not trying to paint it like it's just a nightmare of a thing. But it, what it did remind me of, and I noticed this as I drank more, hung out more. And by the way, shout out to the people who fucking hung. Your boy Maverick and I hung out. Mm-hmm. Dean Stanfield, who I fucking adore, uh, showed me around. We had a great time. But I absolutely became more bro like I yep. absolutely reverted back to college, Drew, and part of it was like a defense mechanism. I realized, like now looking back on it, part of it is like these are the people who made me funny. These are the only people who ever tried to like pick on me or give me shit. I was, you know, the queer who played football. I, like they had to give me some respect because I was as good at football as them, but they were constantly ribbing me. I used to have the joke. My nickname in college was <clears throat> liberal left slur, liberal so, faggot. Yeah, there it is. There so, it is. thank you, Corey. Um. As the week progresses, I get broier and broier. What it was. By the time my Saturday show rose, and again, this is all in retrospect. I'm not processing any of this. By the time my Saturday show rose around, I've been doing the same set all week. I didn't change any of the jokes, but I have like become more mm-hmm. like jockish or whatever. And I'm saying all this to say that then, like, I had some fans there. Shout out to everybody who came. I met Sarah after the show. Sarah, you were very cool. You invited me to hang out uh, at a bar with you and your girl. I hope I didn't offend you. Like I, I realized like when I started meeting the fans, I was like, "Oh man, I I like became an old version of myself." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, it was like going after. 
I'm going to tell this story. This is a confession, and this is not going to make me any friends with our fans, but I, this is like to, to bring the point home. There was this kid, Corey, who had like a guest spot. Trey knows the story. And um, he closed out with, with that as a punchline. Uh huh. That, that, like that. Like I don't even remember the joke. It just like then he just said faggot. Yeah. What I like right. to do is I like to adopt this accent and say fag because over and there he's cigarettes. He wasn't talking. Or smoke. He wasn't pretty, talking about. Oh, he wasn't talking about like, cigarettes. He meant you know homosexuals. But, right. But he said fag. He did. Right. And repeatedly. Repeatedly. Right. And he comes off stage. I'm not what a troll. I'm, I'm not proud of this, but I, did, I had reverted. You know. Yeah. And uh, he walks by me and I said, hey. Mate, nice good set. set, faggot. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and it, it it was like I was not trying to bury your joke. I was trying to hit. That's literally what I said to him, and then he like sincerely thanked me, and it was like whatever. But I to, then I like I told that story to some of the like I feel ashamed. Uh, it was like it was that thing I have in me where like fuck these pieces of shit. And I'll beat them at their own game, but it's like now you yeah. lost because you became them. Yeah, because he's just like right. he's just like oh thanks, bro. He literally did that. Yeah, right. It made me so fucking mad. <laughs> yeah, it's so. It funny. made me furious. Yeah, that's hilarious. And then I was processing it like in the hotel room, stoned, sad. You know, the end of the week, whatever. And I was like, man, it took four days for me to revert to the person that I don't want to be anymore. And what's Dude. fucked up is I convinced myself I did it, like to show a guy. Who's uh-huh. like twenty and an idiot, prop? Like you know what I mean? Right. Who's a? I hope this person never sees. I don't even know who they are. Who's so insignificant <laughs> in my life and in the world of comedy? Yeah, dude. I th- in, t- in a couple fu- weeks, that uh, shit fucking happens though. In a couple weeks, we got to make sure and say cunt a lot. I think so we're on a good little with Australian though. Yeah, rock cunt. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, was we had uh, our word two weeks ago this week. We've got to stop got this. No, well, I, well, no, dude, dude, no, 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 dude, out. I mean, yeah, point. look, we're gonna stop before we get to the N word, obviously. Like, but I'm saying we can yeah. go a little further. Well, uh, we were I'm making joking. a point, and the, your point is well taken because I've <laughs> well, been the vi- point was that I'm an vi- asshole because I said it. No, I know. No, 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 no. The, I mean, yes, 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 and me too. But the point is, is that it is easy to slip back into old habits that you used to, it was no big deal or whatever. And like, I felt the same way around some of my buddies at home. Like, you know, I have matured and I know like, Hey, you know, homophobic jokes ain't cool or whatever. And this, this, and this. And so it's like, I won't make them, but like there for a long time, people around me would still be like, kind of making them and i would just kind of like you know going about my day whatever and like dude really only until like pretty recently have i ever called any of my buddies on some of it where i'm just like hey okay that one wasn't even a little bit good you know what i mean sure like if you're gonna do it at least make it good well that's how you got them in the past was you you beat them at it right i mean that that's that's how it was for me it was like i was like i'm i'm better than y'all at this y'all are dumb and you think that like that's the whole joke but another thing that i want to explain to you guys too to be clear about like so i have a joke that i've been doing right now about um it 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 has a reference to that black eyed Peas song that was popular Uh uh-huh let's get retarded and the joke is is a solid joke and it doesn't offend Um, anyone the way i tell it sounds a little 2000 and late yeah it is a little yeah uh, (laughs) hilarious sorry (laughs) i couldn't help it but what like i realized and then i have another joke it's about this very thing about like toxic masculinity and how broken men are but in it i taught i use the word gay as an insult but like in character Mm mm-hmm I guess part of my point is I'm doing 12 minute sets. Both those jokes were working as I tried. So those became, you know what I mean? It's like I'm being fucking molded by this place after 13 years of doing comedy and very much not wanting to to be not only this comic, but not someone who gives a shit what the audience thinks because I'll tell you what's funny. And again, these are my jokes. I love these jokes. I stand behind them, but it's certainly not two i would choose to do in a 12 minute set necessarily it's like these are for the 25 minute set so you get to know me first that's like unavoidable in my opinion like you uh like like i've talked a ton before about how like coming up where i where we did in like the south or whatever like all the all the types of shit that i do the like you know progressive redneck shit or whatever then and there Mm -hmm. was like 
super Renegade. super subversive and all this type of shit which is what hit for me about it you know what i mean yeah. but then but like out here everybody's just like yeah oh you don't like the confederacy that's the very bare minimum yeah yeah, yeah. you want a you cookie I mean? yeah well, right exactly so I, like, yeah and it makes you start wanting to go the opposite for yes. just a second but then right. you but then you remember your actual core values and you're like well okay but a crowd a crowd you do shows in a in a certain scene that has a certain vibe about it like it's gonna you, you, I don't think you can avoid it, like well, it's also that shaping you in some way. The most toxic part about me is that I have to win. So, like, part of it was just like, I, y'all think I can't do this, right? Y- you think yep. you think one of the liberal rednecks can't make make Austin laugh when it's not his crowd? Yeah, I don't need a loaded bat, motherfuckers. Watch. Yeah, but yeah, then I realized I'm doing what you guys have been doing with your wives. I just realized this, like that kid come off stage and I said that to him, like I'll show you. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, right. My man, pound it out, dude. Yeah, <laughs> but like. But, like, dude, we've all three been like that. Like, we tell everybody all the time that, like, you know, when we when we do a show in San Francisco, we do our thing a little bit different. Where, like, I know when I'm in San Francisco, I make fun of liberals more than I do when I'm in Tennessee. But I kind of you know did I mean? the opposite this time is what I'm saying. Now, it wasn't our right. crowd, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I kind of, like, I let it, like, mold me, and it was right. subconscious. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that shit happens though, dude. I mean, it I, you does. know, well, I mean, it does. Know, shout out Tony Camel for coming out, our boy. I mean, Tony. According to him, Tony. You know, according to him, he didn't see none of it, and I murdered and all that. Thanks, buddy. He's a good guy. Lovely. Uh, a good he's because. such a great fucking uh, musician too, man. If y'all don't follow Tony Camel on Instagram, like brother, it's <laughs> that motherfucker stay noodling on reels, dude. I embarrassed him, and I feel bad about this. We went into this one place. It was in like another club. We were just bouncing around. He wanted to go see it all or whatever, and they were letting me. Because I'm a comic, even though they didn't really know me, I just I, again I had that fucking energy. I was like, "Yeah, dude, I just did a set at the Vulcan. Like, let's just go hang out. We're gonna go to the green room." And he goes, "Is this guy a comic?" And I go, "That guy's a fucking Grammy winner." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, speaking of stand up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug. I think we should wrap it up here. Go, like I said, my, Max actually because Katie's out of town. Those are my next shows. Are the ones in Austin in September, and then after that, I got a big ass Ohio run, five cities, five days, then a bunch of other stuff after that. It'll trycrowder.com get you tickets uh you know watch me and smart mark talk about politics and shit on weekly skews i got a patreon so on and so forth pre-order the book around here and over yonder also on trycrowder.com Corey can tell you about the other stuff uh after drew goes right ahead oh no buddy all i got coming up oh, is yeah, an appointment with the midwife that's right so yeah. I, I think my next show outside of la or san diego is going to be maybe san francisco and i'll let y'all know it is going to be when well red uh, comes home for christmas as we do nice Corey. Yeah, as Trey said, uh, please pre-order the book Round Here and Over Yonder. You can do that at TreyCrowder.com or CoreyRyanForrester.com. Uh, and if you go to CoreyRyanForrester.com, you'll also get a link to my sub stack, uh, which is where I'm doing uh, a lot of cool things, a lot of bonus stuff. It's $5 a month. I'd appreciate it if you uh, supported me on that. And putting on airs, me and Trey show about fancy people, Uh, In their culture, we just ended a three-fucking-week run on the history of the Barbie doll, which uh, was pretty popular. So thank you all for doing that, and uh, I believe that's it. And uh, thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. Oh, by the way, boys, we I'm, just, I'll, I'm not editing this out. We have to do an ad, so stay in here and don't stop recording. Thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. A tune in next week. Thank you. God bless you. Good night and cheers. Oh, I screwed up on that outro music, but I sure would love it if you'd go and pre-order Round Here and Over Yonder. It's a book that Trey Crowder and Corey Ryan Forster wrote. It's wonderful. You can get it at TreyCrowder.com or CoreyRyanForrester.com or the link in the description. Thank you. It's a wonderful book. All right. Thanks.